Well, today we're going to talk about a stock that's been absolutely crashing massive amounts. And it's a stock that I've actually seen some of you guys talk about in the comment section, on the Discord, on the Patreon. We were talking about this stock as well and what potentially is causing this devastation in the share price. So uh, I thought it'd be worth talking about today because I know a few of you guys are interested in it and it kind of follows on for what we were talking about on the Discord. If you do want to join the Discord where there's 600 members to talk to and that's the best place to get hold of me and we, there's a lot of little tabs on there talking about different stocks. And as well as that, I post at least two exclusive videos every week on there and um, one of them was a live Q&A session that we dropped last night but there will actually be free exclusive videos this week on there so if you want a bit more exclusive content a discord to talk to people on about stocks including me and also what I'm buying and selling in real time that is the place to be and uh, just on a side note I dropped the uh, Tesla video out yesterday and I mean look at that the views were absolutely terrible I've done two Tesla videos recently and both of them have done absolutely terrible so I'm getting the hint that you guys do not want me to talk about Tesla I thought, you know what, with everything that's going on at the moment, it'd be an in-demand video, and it's just totally not. I don't know what it is about that one. But getting stuck onto this stock, so this stock is National Express. And like we're saying, this stock has been absolutely battered recently. You'll be able to see here that actually, you know, we had the initial CV dip down here, and it actually touched around about pound thirty-three, which it's actually at right now today. Actually, it's a little bit lower. Uh, and then we had the kind of quick recovery there and then around uh, that kind of September time before we kind of got the vaccine news and the pop up from there you'll see it actually went down to £1.16ish so yeah I mean it's pretty much near the lows of that CV time which is crazy because you think about that time frame and you think about that was a time where you're like this is actually really bad like the country's like stopped operating and even then you're like um, it's going to take years for travel to come back, you know, people going on holiday or even like work because everyone at the time everyone was like, yeah, work from home, work from home's here to stay. And every time there was a few cases, it was, you know, locking down. It was a really bleak time, especially something that relied so much on travel. You're like, this is a really tough time. And now to be in them sort of levels, you're like, wow, you know, that that's crazy to think that's how low we have now got to that point. Um, and if we zoom out, I mean, apart from the, the massive lows of the 08 recession where it got to where, uh, you know, nearly 92p, I guess that's the only time, you know, we're kind of there, we're, we're the, the lows of the CV and we're in the lows of the Great Recession, that's how low this stock has got at the moment and it, the days where we were selling this stock out for a for a 100% return, you know, this is a stock that I've hold, held for two years and uh, I made some good money up on it, you know, I was up over 100% and I was trimming some profit on it, um, you know, the, the days of selling this for 100% seem uh, a long, long ago now and uh, now we're... Uh, buying into the dip again. And the weakness especially has come in the last few days. I mean, look at the last five days, the stock's down 14% uh, at the moment. Last In the last month, down 23%. And um, the last five days have been brutal. Uh, the year to date, down 51% at the moment. So yeah, I mean, it's just really since, I would say the 27th of May, this stock has just massively deteriorated a uh, huge amount. So why is this happening? Why is the stock deteriorating so much? Now, the first thing to do is look financially. Has something changed with the business financially? And uh, if we actually go on the recent trading update, which was on the 20th of October, 2022, it hasn't. In fact, it's uh, at its best point since 2019. You'll be able to see here that revenue is now up 33% year on year and actually 5% ahead of 2019 levels, which is obviously the last full year of operating. You can see here the business is now a better place in 2019. So financially, not too much of an impact from that point of view and profit should start coming back uh, going forward as well. And we should be seeing around about 50 million of profit as well. So financially, it's in a better place than where it was really in 2019. And you'll see here financial 2020 Two results are anticipated to be broadly in line with expectations. And if we have a quick look at the expectations from analysts, if we use Simple Wall Street, if you want to join, link is in the description. You'll actually get a 30% discount if you join through that link. Um, but if you look here, you can see that analysts are expecting you know 55 million this year and then a move to 91 million. So you can see you know they're moving into a good place of revenue. The profit's not really an issue at the moment. They look at the valuation. It's not a really bad valuation. So fundamentally, there's nothing really going wrong with this business here. So that's that one kind of ticked off here. The next thing that could kind of explain the dip is that it's just the stock market. It happens. Stocks lose value for no reason. It happens all the time. Uh, you know, if we look at one that we just talked about a, a few weeks ago, which is Hollywood Bowl, we were talking about 
um, you know, why is this stock dipping so much? You know, this one, you know, around January time, this one fell off a cliff and, you know, was down nearly 40% for no reason. And, and this was a company that financially performed amazing last year uh, and it just made no sense. And then eventually around September time, it rallies, uh, on, goes on a very good run, it's up 41%. And that's what happens in the stock market. It, it's, it's crazy. We can have great assets that for no reason, that's, that's the thing with the stock market, you know, great assets that just lose... 40% of his value for no reason. And that's, that's what can happen. And eventually, you know, the market will realise and wake up and go, this is a bit low for this. And then they come in and it's up 5%. So it could be a kind of like Hollywood ball situation where it just loses value because it does. Uh, and then what we'll see is the market finally snap back to reality a little bit and go, you know what, we've probably sold that National Express stock off a bit too much. So that's uh, another thing that could potentially be happening. Now, a few things that we talked about on this card is potentially is the rail strike affecting National Express. Well, really when we look at the situation, it's not. We actually saw National Express actually come out and I think I highlighted it somewhere here that they actually said that they benefited from the strikes. So uh, it said here that our ability to react quickly to events, meaning that we were able to provide more strike services during rail strikes, basically mean that the drop off because of the rail strikes, we offered services to make up for that and they actually uh, helped the UK re revenue grow by 30%. So yeah, that was basically National Express saying we're benefiting from the, the strike situation. So that's not an issue clearly for National Express. The next issue could potentially be around the debt. Um, at the moment, National Express is a bit debt heavy business. It's not cheap buying, buying trains. It's not cheap buying buses. Um, so we know there's going to be a bit of debt on there. Uh, it does mean they've got fantastic assets as well, by the way. Um, but if you look here, uh, you'll see here there's 81% debt, debt to equity uh, and they sit on 1.3 billion of debt, uh, but they do sit on 341 million of cash. So it's not a terrible balance sheet here. So you could say, okay, we're moving, they've got a lot, a lot of debt here. We're moving into a place at the moment where interest rates are gonna go quite high. So if you've got a lot of debt and you've had them interest rates on that debt, you know, like one, two percent, and now you, you know, you have to go and refinance that debt or anything like that. You know, you're talking, you might have to get that at six, seven percent. Is then that, that would obviously affect you know the profit further down the line and obviously make that balance sheet a little bit worse. So, you know, is that potentially something that is spooking the market at the moment with National Express? Potentially, it could be. And um, the only thing is that when you look at National Express, they do actually say on the recent update a bit of clarity around the debt, and they'll be able to see here that they'll talk about inflation protection from fuel hedges um, and it said over 80% of its debt is fixed interest rates with no material exposure to increased interest rates uh, basically meaning you know obviously it, it can't go up um, and that's until 2024 so you know 80% of that debt at the moment is covered at you know the, the lower interest rates until 2024 so you're thinking there that's you know over you know 12 months away in 12 months time would then we see the interest rates come down and if they were to kind of you know refinance some of this debt will that you know would be able to get the lower rates then so basically the overall thing is that the debt isn't really a problem unless this continues for like another 12 months so yeah the debt even though it could potentially be an issue why the shares are falling I don't know because you can see here that they shouldn't have too much impact from the higher interest rates at the moment. Could be a problem in 2024, something to keep an eye on, but it shouldn't be causing the share price to fall off a cliff what it is right now. So that's obviously something to keep an eye on. Uh, the next thing is um, potential strikes. So it says here, West Midlands bus chaos looms after National Express engineers uh, pay strike to vote. So basically they are unhappy because they have been offered a 10% increase Meanwhile, the company's drivers have also been a pay rise of uh, 14%. So basically, um, some of these engineers in West Midlands, so that's quite a small area really, you know, when you think about all the countries that um, obviously that they uh, operate in, um, it's quite a small area, so it shouldn't impact them too much, but um, obviously some of their engineers are striking because they're not happy that the drivers got offered more of a pay rise. Now, um, I've got to say, I wouldn't be stuffing my nose up at 10%. Like, I know they're like, well, they got 14, so we don't want to have 14, but like 10% is like pretty good. That's near pretty much what inflation is. Um, and I'm pretty sure if they're engineers, I would guess they're probably getting more higher wages than what drivers are getting. I am not 100% sure, but you know, a 10% a increase on whatever the engineers were, if they're getting, you know, 10, 15 grand more a year than what the drivers are, that's a good offer. So um, I don't 
think National Express looks like too much in the wrong here. I don't know the ins and outs, and that's me kind of uh, with not much of a research, uh, and I might be wrong here, but that would be my suggestion here. So I can see why National Express are kind of digging in and going, well, you guys get loads more, so you, obviously you're not going to get as much uh, of an increase. So, uh, and I think that's fair play. You know, there's so many businesses at the moment that haven't been offered. Uh, or workers that haven't been offered a pay rise and then you got offered a 10 percent i think that's pretty good so i I'm, i think I'm, I'm team national express on here but i don't know too much about it but um i guess the, the worry here is that um what happens if this expands you know past the just the midlands and i i guess you know if, if it goes you know to the whole of the uk that the engineers go on strike but uh well maybe something to keep an eye on here but um i can see why national express would be digging digging the heels in a little bit here because it, it does look a pretty decent pay pay increase to me um but yeah so maybe that's what's causing some of the share price uh decline but i won't think something like this would cause the the share price to deteriorate as much as what it has done and especially in the last few months to lose half its value so maybe that's playing you know i would understand if that played like 10 20 percent in the last few months but not like 50 percent so that could be in an, an issue here and i guess the last thing is you know potentially with it being in the last 14 percent um you know 14 percent in the last five days and the last 23 percent in the last month you know that's a, a steep drop and i thought well i wonder if there's some trading update that's going to come out that it's being leaked out a little bit and people know about this trading update and it's not going to be a, a good trading update but i thought i can't see national express actually bringing a a trading update un until probably next year because they did bring one out in the 20th of October which is only two months ago so I don't think that would be the case for that to happen so I mean the other, the only other thing that I was kind of going on here is that the market knows something that we don't currently know yet because I don't know why the market would dump this off so much in the last month um like that unless there was something that we don't know about so that's potentially something to kind of think about and for you guys that are potentially like hold on that actually works like wall street and investors sometimes get stuff before it's out on the market yeah yeah 100 percent of the time it happens especially on the uk side of it the uk side is probably a, a one of the worst areas where you'll see share prices start declining uh, and you're like why is that declining like there's no news out and within like a week or a couple of weeks like some news comes out and you're like is that why it was declining like that few weeks and, and that's that stuff still goes on and you know you can shout all you want that it's not fair but it's it's been happening in the stock market for a while there's still that kind of dirty tactics that do go on behind the scenes um and potentially that's what's going on so maybe there's something going on in the background that we don't know about as investors yet so that's probably something to be cautious of so i mean at the moment to me i can't see any concern why this should be at this level i i have no I could understand why the share price has been a bit uh recently because of what's going on in the environment that we're in, but I can't just justify the drop off that it has been un unless something comes out, which is something to be you know careful of. So, uh, in my opinion at the moment, what we're seeing is a bit of what we saw with Hollywood Ball, where for some reason the the stock just rapidly sold off, and then everyone went, "That's stupid. We should probably buy that," and then we have a big slingshot out of it. At the moment, that's all I can see happening to National Express because I don't know why it should be at these sort of levels. But bearing in mind what I just said a minute ago, there could be something that's developing in the background that we're not made aware of and then that you're like, okay, that's why it's probably been downtrending the last few months. So from my point here, I am seeing a stock that is too sold off and should slingshot out of here, but I'm also being cautious like, why is this happening? Because you know, it's a bit of too much of a sell-off and you know, could something potentially happen? So... Yeah, for me, I know if you guys have been talking about potentially buying National Express, and I think um, I have already bought National Express once this month, um, and I'm, I'm probably not going to you know chase into it. I'm not going to rush into it, but while it's at these levels and it's downtrending, you'll just see me keep nibbling every so often at it, um, and that should cover me in case some like shocking news comes out, and then I'm not you know fully committed into it. Um, and also at the same time, if it's a dip that is just a bit ridiculous, and then it slingshots out. I took advantage of it so yeah um i think that this is at the moment from what i can see a, a, a bit of a stupid sell-off and um, while it carries on i will nibble at the stock and um, but i'll just be cautious in case anything does surprise us um because it does seem a, a really weird sell-off at the moment so that's my thoughts on this one anyway guys um i hope you enjoyed the little update international express anyway guys and um, if you could hit the like button that'd be absolutely amazing and uh, i'll catch you in a bit